We are getting as much as we can done before our projected move in the spring of 2021. The first container was set on the ground and Red had to dig holes under the four corners to get the jacks under it to get it up on blocks. The second container came three days later and the delivery driver informed us that he could set it on the blocks. So Red quickly put them in place and the delivery driver set the back end on the blocks, pulled forward, and Red quickly added blocks for the other end. Then Red used the jacks to lift and level the container. We bought four bundles of lumber for a total of $400. Over here we have a board that was twisted pretty bad, and so I used the planer to take more off of one side than the other side, so it mates up cleanly with the other board. So that's how you take care of defective boards. Okay, so this is the uh, diagram of our barn, and then this is the rafter that we just built, uh, 14 of these. Those are prefabbed, and we'll put those together when we get out to the land. And then, so my next thing is to make these metal braces that span from the side of the connex, and then they reach up and connect to the rafters. So I'm going to cut these metal braces to length. I'll pre-drill the holes where they attach to the rafters, and then they will be welded onto the connex to connect the rafters to the connex and also to give the rafters support in this stretch of its span. Now we also just completed the purlins, which are these smaller boards that go lengthwise, the length of the barn, and the metal will be attached directly to those. He marked and labeled the boards for easy assembly and pre-drilled the holes for the bolts. He used a torch to cut the two inch angle iron into pieces that would be welded onto the storage container. Then he cleaned them up with the grinder. And making the rafters that will go across the storage containers. So it'll be kind of a roof in between. The storage containers are set 20 feet apart. We got 16 foot pieces of pro panel. So he kind of designed it to make those fit without having to trim them. And park our RV under it while we're building our house. And then the two storage connexes can be used to store all of our stuff once we get out Here there. Here are so. the purlins. He cut these yesterday with the bandsaw, which worked really well. And then there's the four remaining rafters besides the ones we already took down. This is our part two video of putting the roof on our shipping container barn on our off the grid property in Southern Arizona. So join us in seeing how it's all going to turn out. One month after our previous trip, we were back out at the land. We arrived late that night, set up camp, and the next day the kids and I went to work assembling the rafters, while Red started welding on the tow strips that will give extra stability and support since the rafters will be set in the middle of the shipping containers. His original plan was going to have the rafters attached to the inside edge of the shipping container, since the main purpose of the roof is for shade and it was much cheaper to do it that way. The first thing I'm doing is welding on a runner down the center of the con. This is where the toe of my rafters will sit and it's not a really strong area so I don't want a lot of the weight sitting in the center of it. the strip that I'm running down that the toe will sit in will help distribute the weight of each rafter. Since he prefabricated the rafters all we had to do was to line up the holes, hammer the bolts through, then secure them with washers and nuts. Here we have a rafter propped up between the shipping containers so he could measure and double check the height at which to weld the angle iron strips. The other thing that I'm doing is welding on upright supports on the edge of the connex up to the rafter where they'll be screwed into the rafter. This will actually bear most of the weight of the roof and it'll put the weight of the roof 
uh, directly on the other side of this, where it has a lot of structural integrity. So the plan is to have most of the weight of the roof bearing on the sides of the connexes via the upright struts, and then the toe strips will keep the rafters from spreading apart under load. To get the second toe runner set, we each got on one connex and ran a flexible tape across, pulled it tight, marked it, and welded it in place. It turned out pretty good, with most of them fitting in almost exactly, and a few having just a half inch gap that I was able to just fill with a little block of wood. So that worked out pretty good. And within the groove and they were exactly in place. Then we just attached the rafters to the uprights that I welded onto the connexes. On one side, the uprights were in a little bit the wrong place. They came up a little above the rafters. Fortunately, this wasn't a really big issue. I just had to re-drill the holes, which was pretty quick and then come back later with the sawzall and cut off the excess material. The rafters are made of rough cut hardwood and so the dimensions are roughly two inches by six inches. So they have a lot of structural integrity and shouldn't have any trouble bearing the weight of this roof. He looked at the available materials and the cost and size of the roof and decided to go with 16 foot long pro panel sheets which ended up coming to the middle of the container. Then he designed the rest of the roof to make it fit. We also wanted to park our RV under it while we build our house and also have a shaded work area. So he designed the trusses with collar ties for high clearance. Here they are installing the last rafter. It took three guys four hours to put up all 14 rafters. So the rafters are spaced roughly three feet apart. The purlins are made out of the same material, just cut in half, so roughly two by three. And the recommended spacing for the pro panel that we used was two feet in between purlings. And so that's what, what we did. So that ended up being nine runs of per side. So 18 runs total. I think it was 72 uh, purlins that I had to cut. So quite a bit, but... That spacing worked out fantastic as I was climbing around on the roof, screwing the screws in. I felt that it was firmly supported and wasn't in danger of bending. So the roof serves the purpose as being the rack for our solar panels. So we made sure to orient the building in such a way that uh, facing directly south, it's at the perfect pitch for the solar panels. So we'll mount our solar panels on one side of the roof. It's big enough to hold our entire array and provide all the power we need for our house. I can run the wires from the solar panels down into the connex and in one side of the connex, plan to make a power room for our solar panel equipment. And I'll probably put in a man door on the inside. We can access it easily, and I'll probably wall off the end of that connex so we'll have a dedicated power room for our solar system. Just come out of that room and then run power over to the house and over to the well house. Um, so kind of, you know, further on down the line, I'd like to install a couple of man doors, one on each connex to, to give easier access, and then we partition them a little bit to provide different rooms within the connex for different functions. So it's going to serve a lot of purposes and while we're building our house, and then its purpose and uses will change over time, and uh, really think it's going to be a great structure that we're going to use in a lot of different ways. I designed the rafters to have a lot of clearance underneath. We want to be able to get a backhoe or an RV uh, in between, and so I wanted to achieve 15 feet of clearance in the middle of the barn. So in order to do that, the cross beam is pretty high up, and a lot of the weight is carried on the uprights that I welded on. However, one side effect of this is that uh, under load, the rafters could theoretically spread and 
try to push the connexes apart. And so I got to thinking about that, and kind of as an afterthought, I decided to put in anchors on the four corners of the outside of the con So we dug down deep, we and cemented in some treated lumber, and then I welded on some pieces to the bottom channel of the connex, and then ran a bolt through the pieces that I welded on and the treated lumber in order to firmly anchor the connexes to the ground. Put these connexes on these piers, and so I've got eight piers for each connex, and it's just the weight of the connex pushing down on those piers, it's the friction between those points of contact is all that's keeping it in place. And so I, I feel a lot better having those anchors, having it bolted to anchors that are seen in deep in the ground. Uh, it'll just keep it from ever shifting at all under high wind or under stress from the roof. The prefabricated rafters and design came together very well. However, we did have three issues come up during the build. The first was when Red was welding on the angle iron supports and he accidentally welded a hole all the way through the container. He tried unsuccessfully to fill it, then thankfully decided to look inside. When he did, he found that the blanket where we had our luggage was on fire. He quickly stomped it out and poured some water on it. The other issue that we somehow overlooked is that one container was sitting two inches higher than the other one. If it had been a big problem, we could have raised one up or lowered the other, but it worked fine. Red just had to redrill the holes to attach it and cut off the angle iron in a few places where it was sticking up past the purlins. It made the angle of the roof slightly steeper, which was better for mounting our solar panels anyway. The final issue that we had was that we forgot the foam closure strips we had ordered, so we weren't able to put on the ridge cap. This was the cheapest structure we could think of to fulfill all of our needs, which are dry, secure storage for our belongings while we build our house, a shaded work area and place to park our RV and eventually other equipment, a rack to mount our solar panels that will power our house and well, an insulated room to store our solar equipment, rainwater catchment with containers for water storage, partial shade in one side of the fence for our garden, sheltered animal enclosures under the roof area, and an eventual workshop area. Here is the cost breakdown for our shipping container barn, and be sure to check out our other videos on frugal, off-grid, simple living.